Where are you, old pepper? This has got to be tighter. Oh, here, I got it. Huh. I'm about ready to go, Paul. Yeah, when you lash a load down, you'll really do a job. <laughs> you bet. That canyon road's pretty steep. I wouldn't want anything bouncing out. <clears throat> He took the North Fork to Jackson's Ford, and then come in the back way. That's got to be at least 10 miles far. It's a longer way, but it's a safe way. You and Haas and Joe take that route all the time. <laughs> yes, we do. So will you, when you've had more experience. This is the first time you've taken a wagon this big. I'll be leaving for Beaver Camp in about an hour. I'll see you there. Yes, sir. That was a quick trip. 
Thought you was gonna be gone for three days. Enterprise. What's that all about? Hey, take a look over there. What's the matter? Would you excuse us, please, Joseph? right away. I expect I can get out to the road and catch a ride on a freight wagon before dark. Yes, I expect you can. Don't want to hang around where I'm not wanted. Not that I blame you. I, I did what you told me not to. And I, I got a Good horse killed. And I busted up a wagon. Now, you, you tell me how much that horse and wagon costs, and, and I swear to you, I'll, I'll send you the money just as soon as I can. Where do you plan to go? A lot of places. Did you figure I was sending you away? Sure, I, after what I... Wrong. I'm leaving on a pack trip early tomorrow. I want you to come along with me. We'll be gone several days. Pack trip? What about what I did today? We'll get to that. Yes, sir. in range, East Ranch. All right, down this way. Thank you. 
Awfully quiet, Jamie. Cat got your tongue? Uh, just waiting, I guess. Waiting? Want to find out what your punishment's going to be for what you did yesterday? That's about it. What do you think it ought to be? Well, some of the kids at school get a belt used on them when they do something wrong. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's for kid stuff. What I did was worse, much worse. Did you wreck that wagon deliberately? No, sir, of course not. Well, it was an accident. Yes, sir. Expensive, but still an accident. But you did disobey. Yes, sir, I sure did. So what we're concerned with is the punishment for disobedience. Yeah. Well, if we use that strap that you're talking about, we wouldn't be able to sit in the saddle. We've got a long ride ahead of us. Well, maybe we'll figure something out on the way. Unless you have an idea now. No, I ain't got any. I think you're gonna like that East Ranch spread. That Betsy Rush makes the best pie in the territory. Somebody chopping? Yes, it does. Better have a look. Any of your business, but when I get that done, I'm going to build me a flume. And divert this stream? You got it, mister. Move the creek away from the gravel bar so as I can do my mining in the dry. You're going to pack up and move out? Now, this is my claim. Who are you to be telling me to get out? I'm Ben Cartwright. So what's that mean? It means I own this place. Now, I've got a map that says this is government land. Open to anybody who wants to stake a claim. I'm private property, and you're not.
jump in our claim, we'll have the law on you. You have no claim on anything here. You're in Ponderosa property. Under what? Save it, Kale. You're talking to the boss, Rooster. That's Ben Cartwright. What I heard, I thought it'd be as big as a mountain. But he ain't. I'll bet he can be hurt just like anybody else. Now start packing. Keep moving. All the way through. Mr. Cartwright. I run those two off the ranch a week ago. Yeah, we picked up their tracks of the timber. Follow them to Feather Creek. I guess I'd better ride up that way more often. Oh, I'm forgetting my manners, letting the boss man stand around here. Now, Betsy, good to see you. Mr. Cartwright? Uh, brought a new hand here. I see. Jamie, this is Mr. and Mrs. Rush. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello, Jamie. Glad to know you. Well, I expect you're hungry. Uh, not this time, Clint. We, we're way behind schedule. Still have a long way to go. Oh, uh, here you are. Three months' pay. I think I'd listen to the things you need, and I'll pick it up on the way back. All right, I'll have it ready. All right. Will you excuse me, Mr. Cartwright? Nice to see you again, Betsy. Those, uh... That look pretty good. Yeah. With the care and feed they've been getting, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Well, trying to improve the breed is always a gamble. I think this one's going to pay off. It's paying off now. There's only two scrubs in the last calf crop. Another two or three generations will tell the story. Yeah. Oh, you'll be seeing Bill Cooper. Say hello for me. Be glad to. Gets lonely here. But his job, that had me talking to the squirrels. Now listen, those uh, prospectors came back once. They might try it again. I'll be on the lookout. You two hurry back. Uh, go, Jamie. I'll be seeing you, Jamie. All right, bye bye. See that stone you got your foot on? Has a cross cut in the top of it. It's a section corner. Marks the east line of the Ponderosa. Now this guard tree here behind you, it's a witness tree. Tells you where the cornerstone is just in case it gets covered up. Oh, I see. Uh, this, uh, Bill Cooper, where do we find him? He's at the south camp, about two days' ride from here. You know, Clint Rush wanted us to come in, but his wife didn't. What do you suppose was wrong? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Trouble of some kind. Well, if it'd been ranch trouble, I think Clint would have told me. In fact, I'm sure he would have. Family problems are personal. And don't mix into them. Oh, yeah, I know. I... Well, all I was going to say is that this jerky sure don't taste like that apple pie you told me about. <laughs> sure don't. You know, we got a real pretty ride ahead of us. Could be an easy one, too. A rifle. Time to ride.
Pony. It's been a long time. I hope I'm welcome here. Any man can walk into my lodge now. How can I stop them? But you are welcome. I'm sorry to find you sick. My heart is sorry you came when my granddaughter hunted your beef. Did she miss? No. She shot true and straight. And with a rifle as old as yours, that's no small thing. Oh, no, White Squirrel is the, the true granddaughter of Tall Pony. Did she choose a good animal? Yes. With good fat on the ribs? Yes, a young steer, a lot of fat. You are the granddaughter of a chief. You did well. She only did what she was told to do. I am the real hunter. <laughs> what will you do now? We'll help White Squirrel dress out the beef, bring it here and hang it up. You'll eat a lot of fat and get well and strong. Well, there's no way I can pay you. When you get well, you will hunt the mountain lion and the wolves that kill our calves and foals. Well, even if I could hunt, I could not shoot. My gunpowder is gone. I'll send you a rifle and shells and some flour and salt and some blankets. If I see your son, I'll send him back to you. He will only leave again. Yes, it's possible. Well, come on, let's tend to that beef. I don't understand. I, I, I can see why he let that old Indian have the ponderosa be, you know, him and the girl being hungry and all. But, but sending him a rifle and shells, isn't that asking for it? What would you have done? Well, I mean, that Indian is pretty old and sick to be hunting mountain lion and wolves, and, and that girl sure ain't big enough or strong enough to help any. Well, you may be right. Yeah, and, and if he can't earn the wolf bounty, then... We just may use the rifle to kill some more ponderosa beef. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> Why are you sending him the rifle? Jimmy had known that old man for a long time. And I'd know he'd kill ponderosa beef only if he needed it to stay alive. And if that happens, then I consider it partial payment and a debt I owe him. What about that old Indian son? Why doesn't he help him? He's become a town Indian. He quite a taste for whiskey. Stays drunk most of the time. Can't keep a job long enough to earn the money to pay for the whiskey, so he begs. That's plain awful. It's part of a plain awful pattern. We destroyed a proud people. That's the debt I was talking about. We all of us share it. Or ought to.
That calf should have had the Ponderosa brand, not the Fox D. That's right. Hey, somebody's stealing your calves. Well, I don't know if Harlow and Charlie would agree with you. I think you're right. Harlow and Charlie? Yeah, Trap Brothers. They own the box to you. Man up, youngin. Oh, no trap. I thought this was a south camp. It is. Two saddled horses. Looks like the Trap Brothers are calling on Bill Cooper. We'll come in from the back. I have seen some stubborn people in my life, but he has got to be the worst. Why don't you talk at him? Been too much talk already. This ain't like it appears. Uh, old Bill Cooper over there, he's got some funny ideas, and we're just trying to reason with him. Hey, been talking, but not to me. And now, what he's going to try and tell you, Mr. Cartwright, is that we was branding your calves with our goonies. We wouldn't do that. That'd be stealing. Ain't that right, baby brother? That's right. I mean, what we was doing, Mr. Cartwright, you see, is we was branding strays. And everybody knows that ain't stealing. That's mavericking, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. I saw two of your box tea mavericks. Following Ponderosa cows. Uh, trying to get acquainted, was he? No. Following the mothers. They were Ponderosa calves. You don't suppose we could have made a mistake? It was 26 by my count, Mr. Cartwright. He must have branded them while I was billing fence. I bet it was one of our hard hands. <laughs> but one hard hand, and he quit you six months before them calves was born. Now, Mr. Cartwright, you don't think for one minute... We'll let the judge do the thinking, Harlow. Now, come on, we've got a long way to go. Let's get started. You got to admit, we didn't harm a hair on old Cooper's head. I mean, we just kind of tied him up in there so he wouldn't get mad and commence to thrashing around and hurt himself while we was talking. Talking about which one was going to pull the trigger and which one was going to dig a grave. All right, move out. <laughs> now, I mean, you know, that that's not true. I mean, we wouldn't have uh, harmed a hair on his head. I mean, he just ain't got no sense of humor. You know, I mean, uh, trouble with him is a man lives by himself as long as he does. He just naturally gets mean and, and suspicions everybody. And, and ain't that right, baby brother? That's right. Come to think of it, it was... It was raining uh, mighty hard that day. We couldn't hardly uh, keep the uh, fires going and, and the branding irons hot. I mean, uh, it'd been easy to make a mistake about which calf you was putting a branding iron on. 26 mistakes. You know, uh, Cooper and us have been neighbors for a long time, you know. Uh, you know, it's the mark of a big man to, to forgive and forget. Ooh. Appears like uh, somebody left it open. I didn't see area cow. You, you had quite a big herd here, didn't you, Mr. Cartwright?
Move out. You know what? That's what happens. A fella gets worried about a couple little old scrawny calves, and next thing you know, somebody done run off with his whole herd of prime beef. Happen every time like that, you know. On your feet. You too, let's go. Settle down. Take it easy. Settle down. up again, but uh, that rain, I mean, it was a pure D gully washer. And all them little calves was mired down in that mud. Their mamas was nowheres in sight. They was orphans, mavericks. And I said to brother, I said, brother, it's our bounden duty to take care of them poor little calves. You sure you wouldn't like the cold beer, Mr. Cartwright? I mean, it's about the coldest beer in, in the whole territory. Oh. Uh -huh. Don't suppose you would. Why don't you shut up? Now, now, brother, you ain't got no call to talk to me like that. It's like I said, Mr. Cartwright. I mean, it was raining so hard, you, you couldn't hardly see your hand in front of your face. I mean, we weren't really stealing. You were saying? Been here before. They know their way. It's been a busy day. Oh. I got a friend of yours in there, Ben. Clint Rush. Drunk, disorderly, disturbing a peace. Hello, Betsy. Mr. Cartwright? I thought I saw you sitting here when we rode in. Uh, you remember Jamie? Yes, you were at the ranch. Uh, Jamie may not look it, but uh, he's hollow to the heels. He's. Uh, He's going to get himself a sandwich and a piece of pie. It was good to see him, and you'll excuse me. Mind if I sit down? No, no, not at all. I think it's good just to sit. When's the stage due? Oh, uh, 15 minutes. Maybe an hour. The uh, agent didn't even want to make a guess. Yeah. Nice day to travel. Yes. I I'm going to visit my folks. On Carson City? Mm-hmm. My, uh, my, my father's getting on in years, and, well, I, I thought it would be a good idea to see him before it got too late. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know your father. He's about my age. Mr. Cartwright, I didn't mean that. I... What, that we were tottering to the grave? I know that. My mother hasn't been feeling very well, and... Oh. Mr. Cartwright, I might as well tell you. I'm leaving Clint. Well, these things happen. I know you've seen him, so if he told you to come talk to me, to ask me to come back, it's not going to do any good. No, not a word. Didn't say a thing. Be a nice change for you in Carson City. Certainly will. And it does get lonely living out in the ranch, miles from your nearest neighbor. Hard to get used to. I'm used to it. I was born on a ranch. Oh, we had our squabbles, I guess most married folk do. All the way into town, I was trying to figure out if it was my fault or his fault. Both our faults. It does take two to argue. I left him a note. I was hoping he'd come get me, but... 
Well, he came to town, all right. He went straight to the saloon. He wasn't looking for me at all. Went to the saloon, he got drunk, he got in a fight, and he got hauled off to jail. And that made up your mind for you? It certainly did. Go on, I'm not about to try to change it. There are two men in jail with Clint. You know, those two fellows who opened up the gates and scattered the East Branch herd. Were those the two he was fighting? That's what the sheriff said. Well, they ought to be in jail. Now, how is it, Jamie? Well, it's fair. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mrs. Rush makes the best pie in the territory. Gonna miss that apple pie when I visit East Ranch next. Guess Clint will, too. You know, there's nothing like freshly baked apple pie cooling on a windowsill that says, Welcome home. Well, I guess I just better get going. Betsy, have a nice trip. Thank you. Let's go, Jamie. take my place. I've been at East Ranch too long. If that's what you want. Well, it ain't always what you want, Mr. Cartwright. Sometimes... Uh... <sighs> Thanks, Jamie. Yes, sir. Better get on out there. <laughs> days in jail for the prospectors, six months for the trap, but what'll happen to the ranch? Bill Cooper will look after it. Oh. Their cattle will graze with the Ponderosa herd. What about Clint Rush? He said he'd be back at the ranch. Yeah, but he said he'd be on the lookout for those miners, too. That's right, he did. Boy, he sure messed up, didn't he? You know, I bet he rode for the hills. Will probably take us two or three days to round up that. You were saying? I talk too much. I got everything back the way it was. I figured you'd want to ride out and take a look. They look pretty good. Well, we got a few scratched up and one in the barn with a sore leg. Outside that, everything's all right. Well, you got everything under control. Yeah, and it's going to stay that way till a new man shows up to take over. Why, still want to leave? Well, it's like I told you. It ain't always what you want. It's.
Here, let me take that bag. Sure is good to be home. Oh, you don't know how good it is to have you back. Betsy, it's going to be hard to say no to that, but we still have a long way to go. Next time around, I promise. Bye-bye. 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 This is one of my favorite spots. I'd like to stop here for one last look before starting for home. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it really is. Let's tie up. Even smells pretty. Yeah, yeah, it does. I guess we got some talking to do, huh? Talking? About a horse I killed and a wagon I wrecked. And what kind of punishment I'm gonna get. I thought we decided that you were too old to have your pants worn with a belt. Yeah. When you do something bad, something wrong, and you gotta pay. I agree with that, Jimmy. You break the law, you answer to the courts. Yeah, well, I like the Trab brothers or, and the miners. What do you do uh, when an animal gets sick or gets hurt? You take care of them, or call a vet. Well, men get sick. Like, like top one. Or they just go playing out the road. You take care of them. You, you don't yell at them or swear at them or fire them. Sometimes I yell and sometimes I fire them. Clint all but broke his back to make things right again. But how did you know he would? It's a good man, an awfully good man. When a good man makes a mistake, he does everything he can to make it right again. Jamie? Have you had a good look at this witness tree? No, not really. I want you to. Isn't Joe's name. That's right. They made the swing with you, too? Yes, they have. On various occasions. I'll bet they have. Why don't you put your name there? 